Sa haba, nakalimutan Kaya nga ako rin eh. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, let, let me phrase it in a better way. Ha? Let, let me phrase it. Ah, ang tanong ko po, bakit tinanggal yung superintendent? Okay. So, Mr. President, according to the Secretary uh, Vice President, um, the, the two superintendents were already clashing. Okay. Uh, so, so let me answer that so, because the Vice President might not have gotten the right information during that time with all due respect. First of all, the superintendent, Dr. Ailes, was taking every single order from Yusek Powa and from the NCR director. Pinapakita niya sa akin yung text mismo. Every single action niya. In fact, tinataguan pa niya minsan yung mayor to meet with the principals away from the two mayors. <clears throat> it was the superintendent of Makati who was emailing the teachers and principals in uh, EMBO na wag papasukin ang mga taga-tagig. Okay? And Yusek Powa was there when Mayor Abi threatened that kung hindi magbabayad ang tagig to rent, isasara na lang niya yung schools. Di ba? So from the very start, alam mo na kung sinong reasonable at hindi. So it goes back to yung sinabi po ni um, ASEC uh, Bringas. No? ASEC, ang problema kasi sinabi mo, yung neutral, yung wag magpaipit, this is a question of tamat mali eh. Sino ba may jurisdiction, Tagig or Makati? Makati superintendent should have nothing to do with the 10 barangays. The principals, when they met with Dr. Ailes and with the NCR director, were given a choice. Lumipat sila sa District 1 ng Makati or to remain. They, they chose to remain. Almost all of them. Dahil mas gusto daw nila sa Tagig. So you were assuring the teachers kanina, gawin nyo lang yung tama. Okay kayo. Eh, hindi yung ginawa kay ano eh. Kay Dr. Ailes eh. Ginawa niya yung tama, tinamaan niyo eh. Tinanggal niyo eh. Why? Because of the PR effort of uh, Mayor Abby na saying may gulo dun. I have the videos now if you want to see it. They barricaded the schools. There are no people barricading the schools. Which goes to the next point. Who is guarding the schools right now? Kaninong security guard? Sa DepEd ba? The answer is no. Yeah, kaninong security guards? Alam nyo? Makati? Contracted by Makati, oh. Mr. President. And why are you protecting them? Uh, they, were, they were ordered by the PAP to leave. And Tagig already said na papalit sila. And the principals already said, one of them, hindi pinayagan ng security guards sa loob ng sarili niyang school. The security guards there are taking orders from Makati, not from DepEd. In front of the DepEd and NCR, sinabi ng Tagig, when our security comes in, they will not be following the mayor of Tagig, they will be following the principals. In your meeting, there were certain agreements. Hindi naman sinusunod ng Makati dahil yung security guards sa Makati. Ito, dalawang sulat sa iyo sa PNP, they're here. Pinatawag ko yung mismong Sora. Sumulat sa inyo, hindi nyo man lang sinagot eh. So how can you say you're not protecting? You say po, ito, may sulat sa inyo. Nakita mo na yung letter. Mr. President, Madam Chair, for the record, Makati has no authority anymore over the areas. So they have no business having security guards in schools there, taking orders from the Makati mayor. And you have not allowed Tagig security guards to enter. There are several letters pending since all Hindi nyo rin sinasagot. So how can you say you're not protecting and favoring yung Makati security guards? Pag may nangyari sa school na yan, is it the responsibility of the Tagig mayor or the Makati mayor? 
According to the Vice President and Secretary, it's the DepEd responsibility. No, I take exception. It's both. If something happens to Davao High School, it's both the mayor of Davao and the DepEd. Kasi constituency, DepEd doesn't live alone. Hindi isolated ang DepEd, hindi all-powerful ang DepEd. DepEd tagig yan. Look at the basic governance law. Look at the government code. Meron kayong DepEd tagig. There's no such thing as DepEd Office of the Secretary. So kung may mangyari dyan, yung parents magko-complain sa city ng tagig. Hindi sa DepEd. Kung may mangyari sa health center, sa Comembo, Embo, Rembo, they will complain to DOH and Taguig. Hindi pwedeng sabihin ng DOH, DOH lang. ba? Diba? Yet, you're not allowing Taguig put security guards there. Diba, Yusek Powa, with, with the permission of Madam Chair, ang usapan, joint inventory. Nag-inventory ang Makati mag-isa with the help of their guards. Nawala ang tagig, di ba? O, kinumplain sa inyo yon. Hindi nyo pa rin pinayagan yung guard. O, ano kasing transition team yon? Isa lang kausap nyo sa transition. Mr. President, um, is, is the senator um, waiting for a reply regarding the letter? Because you had the question earlier, so I'm not sure if no, there I, is a response. I'd like to find being... out para umikle, yes. because I yes. made my point. Are they going to allow security guards from Taguig to make sure na safe yung teachers, students, and uh, no there or not? Yes, no? Sabi mo yes, di ba? Yes. Uh -oh. Oh. Security, yeah. Mr. President, pending the transition plan, yes, security security forces or security guards from TIG uh, will be allowed there. Okay. I thank you for that, Madam Vice President. Actually, in fairness, she was saying that to me earlier already when you first mentioned the question. Yeah, but, but the transition the, committee has not answered. Yeah, I, I was saying and, and that. And the rules ang, uh, ang PNP, kaya nga nalilito na, si, nalilito na sila eh. Diba? Because usually, it's the principal who decides. Okay? So, which goes to my point on ownership. Is there an issue sa ownership ng schools? Uh, with respect to the ownership, um, the Vice President Secretary says they've uh, asked the parties or asked the parties to refer that to the court, yeah. to the, back to the Supreme yeah. Court. Madam Vice President, I, I, I admire yung, you answering and standing up for the committee, but I know it is the committee who's meeting people. Okay. First and foremost, any school you go to in the Philippines na DepEd, at makita mo na DepEd school, anong assumption nun? Sino may ari nun? DepEd, I will Dep reply. Okay. Dep so if Alan Cayetano says that's mine, will you believe me? Without proof, no. Yes, and you're already my sister. That's but true. But still, you will not as believe me. Di ba? Okay. So this is my point, and that's why I made reference na kilala nyo pa ba si Nilo Rosas, no? Because if you go back in history, very strict ang DepEd, para magkaroon ng DepEd school. There's no such thing as a uh, LGU school. Meron yon sa SUC. So, sila Win Gatchelian, pioneered, meron sa university sa Valenzuela. Meron university ang <coughs> tagig TCU. Iba yon sa PUP, TUP, etc. CHED yon. Iba yon sa private. <coughs> sa DepEd, these are all DepEd schools meaning funded by DepEd, pati teachers, etc. But nung nagkulang na yung lupa sa Metro Manila, pumayag na yung DepEd na magkaroon in the, in the past, a few years, 10 years, 15 years ago, pumayag na magkaroon ng MOA na pwedeng gamit. Pero DepEd school pa rin yun. Okay? So, when Mayor Adami said, isasara ko na lang ito, Bakit hindi nag-respond sila Yusek Powa at saka yung ano na? You cannot do that. So let me ask you, all of these schools, 14 schools, is it patrimonial property or public use? 
public use, oh. Your Honor. If it's Mr. public President. use, is it the municipal corporation that has jurisdiction or is it Congress? These are Supreme Court decisions. So para dun sa mga nakikinig, kawang makati bumili ng lupa, nagtayo sila ng Jollibee doon, patrimonial yon. Sa kanila yon sila may are. Pero halimbawa may lupa doon, bigay ng gobyerno nila para sa ospital, para sa uh, um, police station, para sa ano, public use yon. Hindi nila pwedeng angkinin yun. Okay. So has the Transition Committee, committee written the DNR or the Bureau of Land or the Land Management Bureau? No, Your Honor, Mr. President. So I, I'm confused now. In ABS-CBN, sinabi ni Yusik Powa, hindi issue yung lupa dito. Pero ang sinasabi, kaya Office of the Secretary muna, kasi sabi ng kanila, kaya kailangan namin alamin. Eh, ang boss nyo, Vice President eh. Isang sulat nyo lang, bibigyan kayo ng sagot. Let eh. me call the page. Pakibigay ito kay... This is a certification na there's no special patent to uh, Makati. In fact, there are three schools. Basahin ko lang. But in terms of Comembo Elementary School, Sembo Elementary School, South Sembo Elementary School, these slots were proclaimed in the name of the Republic of the Philippines Department of Education. So sa inyo to. So kung sa inyo to, sino dapat maglagay ng security guard? Diba dalawa lang? Itagig lang or DepEd lang. Makati, Paranaque, Muntinlupa has no authority to put security guards in a school outside their jurisdiction. Pakiabot na lang. So, you know, I'd like to thank the Vice President for her patience in listening to this because we have thousands of students eh, and as we discussed, malaki ang problema natin sa education. Hindi nyo nare-realize yung oras na ginugugol dito para lang maayos itong lahat. Eh. No? So, we've talked about <clears throat> ownership. Does that, does that satisfy you with the ownership? Unless Makati can show you beyond reasonable doubt or with a, a preponderance of evidence na may titulo sila. Uh, Mr. President, according to the Vice President um, Secretary, uh, Makati has made it clear that they are questioning the ownership, claiming the ownership yes. of the and, property. And, and Madam Chair, anyone can, can, can say, have, I have, we have people in Rizal who say they, hold, they own the whole Metro Manila. There are crazy people everywhere. So where's their evidence? Where's their title? This is Fort Bonifacio proclaimed land yan eh. Prinoclaim yan in, in, sa gobyerno eh. So pag sinabi ng Makati sa kanila to, nasa nang kanilang pweba? So maniniwala tayo? This is not land that uh, a municipal corporation bought uh, in the sense na patrimonial or uh, um, this is not commercial land. This is land that was proclaimed from the public domain for a specific purpose, which is for schools. So Makati can make all its claims. So papakinggan natin ang Makati. So pag sinabi ng uh, Maynila, sila na may... Madam President, Mr. President, Madam President, the reason, Madam Chair, the reason I make this, because before this, the transition team got jurisdiction, ayos na to eh. Sa NCR director at saka sa tagig, ano eh. Very clear na lahat eh. Malinaw na sa Makati. If you have claims sa ownership, habulin nyo yung claims. And if they can prove, we will pay. Okay. But now may I ask, because it is public land, dun sa nabagsa ng decision, sabi nyo, nabasa nyo po yung dispository. Ano po sinabi about the preliminary mandatory uh, prohibition? Ano pong sinabi sa patas na? To abbreviate, Madam Chair, may, may I read it na lang. It here, 
the writ of preliminary injunction dated August 19, August 2, 1994, issued by RTC of Pasig, explicitly referring to Parcel 3 and 4, PSU 2013, compromising Fort Bonifacio, be made permanent insofar as it enjoined the municipality now city Makati from exercise jurisdiction over and making improvement or otherwise treating as part of their territory, Parcel 3 and 4, PSU 2031, comprising Fort Bonifacio. So, I assume abogado yung head ng legal nyo. If you have a injunction prohibiting them from introducing, introdu uh, introducing improvements, and they introduce improvements, are they a builder in good faith or bad faith? Builder in bad faith, according to DepEd, Your Honor, Mr. And, President. And does the accessory follow the principal or the principal follow the accessory? The accessory follows the principal, Your Honor, Mr. So, President. So, Madam Chair, napakasimple. Public land, sinabi na ng DNR, walang proclamation sa pangalala ng Makati. Kung ginastusan man ng Makati, they violated the injunction. Klaro ang civil code, builder and bad faith. But even assuming my doubt, it's still public use. So, all that has to say to Makati, kung naghahabol kayo dahil siya, you file a case at maningil kayo sa tagig. Di ba? Oh, so, so ano yung issue? Wala namang issue ng transition, okay na eh. So, let me go to my next point. They're asking for jurisdiction for four schools. Is there any legal basis for that? Is there any precedent in the whole country that one city will ask for jurisdiction of schools in another city? Mr. President, um, <clears throat> the Vice President says they told them to take it to the courts and Congress. <clears throat> Thank you for that, Madam Chair. So I take it that DepEd will deny the request because there's no legal basis for yes. the poor yes, Mr. President, yes. schools. No? <clears throat> so, Mr. President, you know, there's no doubt this is an emotional issue for everyone. Kami nandito, hindi lang para Para din dun sa sampung barangay. We're also here for the parents, for the students, etc. And, you know, amazingly, and Madam Vice President, you know, maybe we can, the, the principals themselves can invite you there. Uh, I know, madali po kayong imbitahan basta education. Every single time that we went there, at talagang sinabi ng asawa ko, wag ka na sumama, uh, ako na lang ang pupunta. But every single time, it's a warm welcome. There, there's some confusion, there's some emotions, pero wala naman pong gulo eh. The gulo comes in when there is something premeditated na may gagawin, ibabarikada nila, sasabihin nila, ayaw tanggapin yung ganito and everything. No? So, th this is my main point, Madam uh, Vice President. Ang request lang ng tagig simple lang, yung normalcy lang. Ting nasa normalcy. Because the city of Makati and Mayor Abi Binay keep saying na kami tanggap na namin na tagig na yan. But she keeps doing the opposite. Diba? So that's where she's very, very different kay Nancy. Si Nancy, Senator Nancy, yes is yes, no is no. Kay Mayor Abi Binay, she will say yes, then no, yen, yes, then no. So I saw the Secretary of Health there. They met with the Secretary of Health. Si Mayor Binay mismo nagsabi, on this date, transition na, kunin nyo na yung health center. A few weeks later, nag-abroad, tapos ayaw nang ibigay yung health center. So, we will never be able to finish our transition pagkaganyan. And we will not be able to give the services that EMBOS deserve if the superintendent will have to say, iba prato ko sa 28 barangays, iba prato ko sa, sa 10 barangays. That's why yung normal si nung, nung 38 barangays na yan. That's why I'll go back. I mean, I've accepted the apology and I, I, I do understand, no? But, but yung point ko, ma'am, uh, sir, uh, ma'am Vice President, and to everyone, no? Hindi po pe pwedeng ang attitude natin, politika to, issue to, neutral. Ang attitude natin, as the Vice President said kanina, my decision, we stick to the decision. So, can Taguig, without the permission of the superintendent of Paranaque, 
do any activities in the in the schools of Paranaque? No, oh. Mr. Pres Mr. President, uh, with the permission of the sponsor can, or the the gentleman from Tagig, can I just read the statement um, yeah. handed to me by uh, the Vice President Secretary? At the time, there was a lack of clear agreement on the turnover, which caused confusion and fear among the personnel. The reason why the transition plan was required for a peaceful turnover. Yeah, ma'am, I respect that, and I will take it at face value. If you can also take my statement at face value, I was there na turnover na eh. nung, bu nung bumalik yung Makati. Na turnover na, it was with Tagig na eh. The principals were there, the superintendent was there, nagbrigada na, tapos na. Pero nag moro, moro sila ng gulo and sasabi lang magulo para nga ibalik. And then, uh, I don't know why they still insist on spending. That will be an issue with COA. Because the Supreme Court's decision is very clear, they cannot spend any more outside, unless they have an ordinance na sister city or whatever. But I will leave it at that, you know, uh, with the commitment. Uh, may I ask for the commitment of the DepEd on two things. Number one, for a smooth uh, transition to normalcy. And number two, you know, that kuku sabi naman na sa mayor na, you know, we have to remove the superintendent, but ganito, ganito, ganito mangyayari, or how can we make it less ganyan, then you fulfill the consultation. Eh. So it's important for me. I, I mean, Madam Vice President, you know naman, I was a faithful uh, cabinet secretary of uh, President Duterte, but when the DILG and PNP started taking out PNP officials without consultation sa LGU, nagsalita din ako, kahit sa kabinete. Sinabi ko rin sa DLG Secretary at saka nandito si Chief PNP Bato. Kahit na drugs, drugs, kahit na ano, di ba? Kasi, siyempre takot yung marami, Vice President, yung Secretary nyo eh. Di ba? But, ang test is that kahit gano ka powerful, sinusunod pa rin yung batas. So, nakalagay sa local government code that you cannot remove or put a new superintendent without consultation Yun lang naman request ko sa humble senator, di ba? That we follow that. I, I don't believe, uh, Madam Vice President, that Lani has ever said no to you in her whole life. No, you've never asked her for anything naman. But what I meant is if one of your person ask her na palitan natin kasi magulo, ganyan, etc. But at least hindi nagkagulatan. So grabe ang epekto sa amin mga principals at studyante, pati dito sa side na to. So just as a last question, the DBM issued a circular na for all the EMBO barangays, ililipat na yung budget under the TAGIG. Uh, may I be assured because I haven't seen the SAGAB. Ano siya? It's there. Yeah. The budget has been... Yeah, the budget has already been... Uh, the budget already reflects that, Mr. President, and According to ASEC, uh, they're already preparing also the, the implementation, basically, transferring the plantilla. Hmm. So would my sister want me to end my interpolation now? <laughs> I want you to be able to have satisfaction with the concerns that you have for Taguig City. Yeah. So, Madam Vice President, I'll just put on the record. Dalawa lang naman po weakness ko eh. Asawa ko at ate ko. So... I ask for your indulgence if I'm emotional about this issue because aside from our heart is with our students, you know, uh, you know how it is to struggle. And you know how it is ko ano yung tamat mali, di ba? And it's difficult pagka ganito na spin is spin eh. So ASEC, I, I hear you and I think your, your apologies is um, sincere. But let's just make it a lesson. Pag may social media, may, may kumukuhang ganon, di ba? And it becomes a laughing matter. Hindi bigyan eh. Sa, ma marami pong principal ang hindi nakatulog. Ah. Uh, just for the record, let me end this way. Ah. <clears throat> yung uniform in-insist na binigay. Ah. Pero yung mga sasakyan, kinuha lahat. At yung mga benefits ng teachers, ayaw nang ibigay. So it's, it's a political move. That's why I, I said, we just have to follow the law and the Supreme Court decision. So tama si ASEC, 
wag tayo makihalo sa partisan, pero hindi partisan yung sabihin sa kanila, you are now under tagig. We're not stopping them from loving Makati. If they love uh, Mayor in Taguig, we love Mayor Lani, but we love uh, Mayor President Duterte. Many in Taguig love the mayors of our neighbors, Mayor Rufi, Mayor Biko. Diba? Hindi kami seloso sa, sa ganon. But to, to you know, make it to the point na safety na, yusik po ah, you know, pasensya ka na kung ganun din, kasi nga, it's not only the safe. Alam mo ba yung chief of police namin pinagtulak-tulakan nung barangay election? No. Because of the ano. But sinabi na lang ng police, maximum tolerance na lang. Huwag ka nang manghuli and everything. Because nga of that security guard issue doon. So with, with that, uh, I end uh, this interpolation to Madam Vice President for this opportunity to, to air these issues. And thank you, Senator Pia. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to uh, put on record that I have known uh, our colleagues, Alan Cayetano, for uh, quite a long time, more than 20 years now, Mr. President. And uh, I've seen his works and his passion, and uh, we understand where he's coming from. And uh, we feel that it is important that these issues be raised because uh, I think there are some issues here that are no longer questionable because uh, the courts have spoken and uh, I, I, I hope that uh, we'll be able to find ways and means to ensure that uh, order and uh, correct uh, measures will be undertaken, especially by uh, the uh, Department of uh, Education, which is a very important uh, department in our uh, government. Mr. President, no one, uh, no member wishes to interpolate, but uh, may I just uh, seek for the uh, recognition of our dear colleague, the chairperson of the Senate Committee on uh, uh, Basic Education, and at the same time, the chairperson, co-chairperson of the Education Commission too, no other than Senator Sherwin Gatchelian. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Senator Sherwin Gatchelian is recognized. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening to the good sponsor. My greetings to the Vice President. Uh, will not uh, ask uh, questions, but uh, instead manifest a few items. Uh, and just to take off where Senator Alan uh, left off, uh, he was asking earlier the uh, per capita spending of uh, per capita spending of DepEd to our students. It's about 28,000 per student. So just to do the simple math, the budget divided by the number of students, about uh, 24 million in our public schools, about 28,000. And the reason why we computed that is we were weighing the uh, pros and cons on whether to expand the voucher system and the ESC. Uh, is it cheaper to expand that and take up the excess capacities of our public schools or continue to increase the budget for school buildings? No? Because we all know that we need approximately about uh, 400 billion to just complete all the uh, school buildings. So we were studying that possibility and would like to encourage uh, DepEd to also look at that possibility of um, expanding the voucher system and the ESC. Um, the ESC and the voucher system is cheaper compared to that 28,000. Um, on the average, the ESC and the voucher system more or less is about 15,000, so it's cheaper than the 28,000. So we, we don't have a specific recommendation on, on that, on that uh, angle. However, it will be uh, good for DepEd to look at that, um, that uh, uh, option to increase uh, um, the voucher system and the ESC to take up the slack uh, or excess capacity of our private schools. So um, I'll, I'll go to my manifestation. First of all, I'd like to thank the good sponsor for accepting seven out of our 14 recommendations. 50% uh, batting average is not so bad, but thank you very much. It fluctuates every year. But thank you. Thank you to the good sponsor. And one of the most important um, uh, recommendation that was accepted was the uh, teacher training for the Matatag curriculum. Uh, we uh, recommended uh, an increase of 1.7 billion to train our teachers in the rollout of the Matatag curriculum, which is being piloted uh, next uh, this coming school year, and um, 
full rollout in 2024, school year 2024-2025. I would like to thank the good sponsor for adding 1.5 billion to train our um, school teachers. That's approximately about 200,000 more or less to uh, school teachers um, in uh, key stage one and other grade levels. So I'd like to thank the good sponsor for that. And I have some appeals. And um, uh, some of the items that were not accepted or not um, included, uh, I would like to make an appeal. Although I know that budgetary constraints uh, is real and uh, uh, looking for funds um, is quite tricky. Uh, nevertheless, I just want to um, uh, make an appeal and put on record some of the items that we made recommendations. Um, number one is um, we recommended to include 160 million for mental health. And this is an offshoot of uh, the hearing that we conducted on mental health. And we were quite shocked that in the last uh, five years, from school year 2017 to present, to date, there are about 7,000 students who attempted suicide. And um, there are about 1,600 learners who actually committed suicide in the last five years. So um, this is... Um, a very uh, concerning uh, phenomenon in our school system. And um, I would like to uh, recommend to increase uh, the budgetary um, allocation for mental health programs so, uh, to address all of these uh, mental health concerns. The other one is uh, connected to Senator Allen's um, comment earlier on the tech voc track. And I really believe that the tech voc, tech -voc track is the low-hanging fruit in terms of improving our K-12 system. And we recommended 144 million pesos to train our senior high school teachers uh, to be certified in TechVoc. So that means when they are certified by TESDA as trainers, the whole TechVoc program can be accredited by um, TESDA. And once the program is accredited, uh, our students can, uh, can, can improve their passing rate in taking the NC1, NC2. Um, Senator Allen asked earlier how many students took the tech voc track. Um, about 400, over about 400 students, 1,000 students took the tech voc track, uh, of which only 7% took the national certification, and 93% did not take the, the certification. So in other words, this is a low-hanging fruit. If we can encourage the whole 400,000 to take the national certification, and uh, looking at the data, the passing rate for those who took the national certification is as high as 98%. They all passed. They all, but almost the all passed. But the question is, how come nine, 93, how many, how the box did not yes, take it? Yes, 93% did not take it. did not take it. Yeah, because one of the reasons during the hearing is cost. Um, to take the examination will uh, cost about, about 1,000, 2,000 pesos per student. Mm -hmm. And um, in the uh, budget of TESDA, uh, we also recommended to include the... Um, national certification for senior high school students, and that was accepted by uh, the, the proponent, the, the sponsor. But in order to level up and to improve the tech voc track, we need two things. Number one is to train our senior high school, uh, senior high school teachers to become trainers and accredit them by TESDA. And then number two, the whole tech voc track of DepEd should be accredited by TESDA. And uh, those are the two things in order to uh, make sure that our tech voc track is accredited by TESDA. So that's why we recommended 144 million to train our teachers to become um, trainers, tech voc trainers. And the last appeal and, 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 and um, uh, recommendation that we made is to create non-teaching positions um, in um, the Department of Education. We um, recommended an allocation of 1.9 billion pesos, uh, I know it's a substantial amount, to hire 5,000 administrative officers 
and 3,000 project development officers um, to help our teachers unload their administrative responsibilities. Yeah. And uh, this has been a perennial, I'm sure the good sponsor have heard this many, many times. And uh, this is actually one of the low hanging fruits as well that we can uh, improve in terms of um, uh, uh, teaching uh, efficiency in our classrooms. And uh, we recommend to hire as many uh, administrative officers and project development officers so that our teachers can be unloaded with their administrative um, responsibilities. So again, those are the three uh, appeals and um, recommendations that we are setting forth. And um, uh, we also have some recommendations on where the budget will come from. And I will just submit to yeah, the good okay, sponsor okay. on some of the uh, um, funding sources that we can uh, we can tap into in order to fulfill those three recommendations that I mentioned. So that's it, Mr. Um, President, and to our good sponsor. Sir President. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Leader. Before I make the uh, final uh, uh, motion on this particular uh, budget deliberation on this particular agency, Mr. President, may I just... Uh, uh, quickly react and uh, make a short manifestation as uh, I was listening attentively to the uh, statements made by the Honorable Gentleman from Taguig Patero, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano. He talked about the importance of implementing K-12. to And I thought, Mr. President, it is important to note that uh, a lot of stakeholders work doubly hard to pass this law. Uh, the law was passed in uh, 2023, RA 10533, with a vision, and I quote, to establish, maintain, and support a complete, adequate, and integrated system of education, and to ensure that every graduate of basic education shall be an empowered individual. Uh, Mr. President, the K-12 model is good, as validated by the experience of various countries, but the problem is the capacity of our, and this has been uh, crystal clear during the discussions uh, made in the uh, Education Commission, uh, chaired by uh, Senator Sherwin Gatchalian, uh, members of which are all here right now, Senator Pia Cayetano, Senator uh, Sani uh, Angara. Yes. Yes, Mr. President. And... Uh, the problem, again, Mr. President, is the capacity of our educational system. Like TESDA, for instance, as made mention by Senator Gatchelian, um, it has no sufficient number of trainers and assessors. And that's why even if we continue to push for higher budget for this particular agency, but they don't have the capacity to produce. I mean, and I would love to see the figures that will be given to us by the, by the agency, Mr. President. Uh, distinguished colleagues. For example, if you're just saying lack of funds, if we buy equipment, if we put up facilities, who will teach there, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues? And so this is uh, very important, and I think uh, in, in this particular case, we are uh, deliberating on the budget of uh, DepEd. We, we maintain, Mr. President, that the K-12 program is a landmark educational uh, reform and needs constant updating. And I will, I will emphasize on that. It needs constant updating to keep up with the emerging issues. We need to keep moving forward, Mr. President, and not revert to old ways of uh, doing things. And that's the main reason why there is educational commission. And right now, we are tasked of uh, reviewing our uh, educational system and ensure that will be able to give the best possible educational program to our uh, um, country and people. Mr. President, uh, let me also put into the record this representation's full support in the budget of the Department of Education. Naniniwala po ako, ginoong Pangulo, na ang edukasyon po ang susi sa bawat pinto ng oportunidad para sa ating mga kababayan, lalo na sa ating mga kabataan. At tayo po ay nagagalak na maging katuwang ng ating butihing Vice President, Vice President Sara Duterte, upang mapabuti po yung uh, learning outcomes para sa ating mga mag-aaral. Would also like to take this opportunity, Mr. President, to thank the Vice President for her leadership in the PQFNCC, yung Philippine Qualifications 
Framework National Coordinating Council and for holding regular meetings of the council. Kasi oh, Ms. Ma Madam Vice President, uh, for the past so many years, every time we tackle the budget of DepEd, TESDA, and CHED, we would always ask this representation together with Senator Pia, Senator Wynn, Senator Angara, we would always ask, how many times do you meet? In fact, in the last four years, bago ho kayo dumating, last four years, four times lang nag-meeting. Doon pong umupo si Vice President Sara, in a span of a year and a half, naka-four meetings, naka, naka meetings na po kaagad sila. So, Mr. President, I think this is important. Kailangan mag-meet talaga yung mga education agencies natin. So, we'd like to manifest that we are in full support, again, uh, in the creation of uh, Permanent Secretariat of the PQFNCC. This was mentioned during the uh, uh, budget deliberation of uh, DepEd. And during the break, this representation, together with this representation's office, coordinated with DepEd officials and worked with us in ensuring that... Uh, the uh, work of the council continues in uh, 2024. We have also put uh, some funds, uh, for example, the additional 12 million for the purpose of the in the budget of TESDA as the secretariat of the council. So, yan po yung ating ginagawa and as author and sponsor of uh, RA 10968 or the PQF law, we are confident, Mr. President, that uh, this will bring wider mobility and opportunities to every Filipino through increased recognition of the value and comparability of their qualifications. So, muli, Ginoong Pangulo, maraming salamat and uh, thank you po sa lahat ng tulong ng ating uh, distinguished sponsor, Senator Pia Cayetano. Mr. President, the uh, Deputy Minority Leader would also like to make a short manifestation. I move that he, she be recognized. Yes, our President. distinguished Deputy Minor Major Minority Floor Leader is recognized. Salamat ka ayo, Mr. President. Just a brief manifestation uh, that this representation joins with a very important evaluation of the Majority Leader. The K-12 was a landmark and game-changing education reform. And in fact, even before the pandemic struck our country, sinasabi na rin po ng iba pa nating mga education reform advocates, kasunod ng K-12, dapat mayroon pa ngang mga kasunod pang education reforms on teacher training, on making sure that the numbers of school buildings, classrooms, etc. are sufficient, and many, many others. At uh, kaya... Um, I'm, I'm glad that the majority leader said that this matter of the K-12, or for that matter, yung uh, mother language education, are some of the important agenda being taken up by the Education Commission too. And uh, since that came up also, just for the record, again, uh, Mr. President, uh, I need to manifest uh, for the minority that it is regrettable that we are not participants uh, in the EDCOM too. So we will just have to uh, engage the important uh, agenda being taken up by the EDCOM too, and certainly the important findings and recommendations of the Commission when uh, the matter is brought to plenary. So just those two things, uh, Mr. President, uh, an affirmation of the K-12 and then uh, the matter of the EDCOM too. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, there being no other reservation for interpolation, I move that we close the period of interpolations and debate and consider the budget of the, office, of the Department of Education, Office of the Secretary, Early Childhood Care and Development Council, National Book Development Board, National Council for Children's Television, National Museum of the Philippines, Philippine High School for the Arts, and National Academy for Sports to be deemed submitted for the body's consideration. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection to the motion, these aforementioned uh, uh, offices under the Department of Education is hereby deemed submitted. Congratulations. I ask for a minute suspension. Thank you, Mr. President.